All right, so in this example, guys, it says a force of 50 pounds acts on an object at an angle of 45 degrees. So let's just, first of all, let's pick out a, now we are talking about angles. So immediately with angles, I'm going to say, well, you know what, let me draw an x, y axis. And let's just say here's the object, nice little box. I have no idea what the object is, so I'm just going to make a box. So it says there's one, um, there is a force that's acting on it at 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is kind of like half a 90, right? There's 45 degrees. And we could call this a vector, and the magnitude should be best represented by, the length of that vector should be best represented by 50 pounds. Okay, so 50 pounds is going to be the way that we represent our magnitude, because you can think about that as like, if it's a small magnitude, if it's a small force, it'd be a short vector. A long uh, vector would be a, a large force. Yes? You could think about it like either kind of way, but what we're thinking is a force is being acted. So I'm thinking of it as, as like a box, and you're like pulling it. Like, so it's a force is being applied to the box. Um, and the reason, the only reason I'm looking at this, because we're looking at this as far as in component form for on this, OK? Um, but either kind of way would still technically work on that. But if you're looking at like the 45 degrees and everything, it would kind of be confusing. So the easy way to represent this or look at this is just being a force being applied. It doesn't say how it's being applied. It doesn't say pulling away or pushing into it, right? So if we did have more information, we could look at it from a different way. And that might affect how we write the, uh, the vectors. But in this one, it's just saying it's being applied. So we can just say, well, let's think of it as like pulling and look at it like that. Then it says the other one is a second force of 75 pounds acts on it at 30 degrees. So 75, negative 30. 75 is larger than 50, right? And 30 is like a little bit smaller. So maybe we could say something that looks like that. Negative 30 degrees. And say 75 OBS. Right? And then, so what they're looking for is they're saying, what is the resultant vector? Now, we talked about resultant vectors. Resultant vectors is basically the combination of our two vectors. Now, unfortunately, for your warm up, the combination was pretty easy because they're both in component form. Correct? These don't look like we have the information to write them in component form. However, we do have the right information as far as angle and magnitude, which is form number two. So therefore, guess what? We can either take each form and put them in component form, or we can just find the resultant vectors um, and then put the final answer in component form. So let's just kind of write this out. Remember, guys, the magnitude and direction is the magnitude of a vector times the cosine of theta sine of theta. Right? This is in your notes. So if I want to write this in terms of its magnitude and direction, I can just say it's going to be 50 times the cosine of 45 degrees, comma, sine of 45 degrees. Now, one thing to remember, that's perfectly fine. But we're, since we're going to be applying some operations, can't we just distribute that 50 through? right? So I'm going to do that. And then for the other problem, I'm just not going to write it the long way. I'm just going to go automatically to that. So for then for this one, I'm just going to write it as the vector of 75 cosine of negative 30 degrees, comma, 75 sine of negative 30 degrees. So now we have our two vectors. If we're trying to find the resultant, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the, the addition, right? Remember when we talked about last class period, the tail to head? We're basically looking to take this vector and put up to there to find this resultant vector. Right? Roughly something like that. We want to find what is going to be that vector. This is the vector, the resultant vector right there. So we want to find the, they're asking to find the magnitude and the direction. So first of all, we need to figure out what this vector is. So to do that, all we need to do is combine the first components of each vector and then combine the second components of each vector. So I'm going to just write this out. Therefore, the resultant vector. is going to look like this. It's going to be 50 cosine of 45 degrees plus 75 cosine of negative 30 degrees. And then we add the two second coordinates, which would be 50 sine of 45 degrees plus 75 sine of negative 30 degrees. Okay, 
So just like we did over there, we add the first component, add the second component. The only problem is these components look a lot more confusing, right, than over there. Over there it was just integers. It was nice. But the math, the process, guys, is exactly the same. So I'm going to use my calculator, though, to add these. So I'm going to type in, make sure you're in degree mode. Um, so you can type in 50 times cosine of 45. Oops. 50 cosine of 45 plus 75 cosine of negative 30. And I get 100.307. So that's going to be, I'll round it to the nearest hundredth. And then my y coordinate is going to be 50 sine of 45 plus 75 sine of negative 30. And I get negative 2.14. Yeah? OK. Uh, now, does that kind of make sense? Should this magnitude, that's like the pounds. If you're doing 50 pounds this way, 75 pounds that way, doesn't it make sense that you're having like 100 pounds that it's going to the right? Yes? And then, does it look like this is like, so here's the horizontal. Do you guys see how like that's just a little bit low, negative 2? Like, does that kind of make sense? Right? So the resultant vector makes sense. Um, now, a couple things, too. I don't really, I rounded these as my answer to the nearest hundredth, or to the nearest um, uh, tenth. But technically, if we're going to be using our calculation, we should store these answers, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store these as A and B. Now I'm going to store my full answer. So I'm going to go back to my answer of 100. No, wait, yeah, 100. And I'm going to store that as alpha A. And I'm going to go back to my negative 2. And I'm going to store that as alpha b. Because if I want to find the magnitude of this revolt, resultant vector, if I want to find the magnitude of a, b, that's going to be a squared plus b squared, right? The square root. The formula is right there, right, in the form sheet? So I'm just going to do alpha a squared plus alpha b squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of that answer. And I'll round to the nearest hundredth. That equals, oh, I'm sorry, that's the component of going over there. This resultant is 100.33. And that resultant vector is LBS, right? That's in terms of pounds. Then it says to find the, the angle of them, of the angle of that vector. So I could say tan of theta is equal to b over a. So theta equals tan inverse of b over a. Again, those are my stored values, so I'll do tan inverse of alpha b divided by alpha a. And I'm getting negative 1.22 degrees. Very small, right? Now, if I wanted to make sure this is in positive, um, positive form, then I would just add, um, add that to 360. And I'm getting theta is 358.78 degrees as I round to the nearest tenth. Yes? Yep, that's from, um, well, yeah, that's for, so that's finding the degree from here to there. Right? Yes? Um, if you remember, if you have two vectors, like here's a vector and here's a vector, to add them, like let's say this is w and this is z, if you want to do w plus z, basically all you need to do is take the tail, like here's the head, that's the tail. You just basically slide that to the wz, so therefore that is your vector w plus z. That's something we covered last class period. So I was just estimating just to get an idea, like obviously that's not perfect, but what I did is I took this vector and slid it to the end of the other vector so I could get an idea, okay? But everything else looks pretty good, right? Now let's, um, let's play around with some numbers here real quick. Let's see if we didn't store these in our calculator, how off 